Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our tackle box. Yep, you heard that right. We have a nifty tackle box here. It's gonna be perfect for Father's Day or a birthday for a fisherman. I'm sure everybody has one in their family. And we're gonna begin by just kind of piecing together some of, uh, well, the things that need to be pieced together. So we have, and where did my fish go? I have an entire fish that I inked. There it is. Um, we've got some elements that are going to actually go inside, and it's this guy here. So we're going to start off with this piece here, and on top of that piece, we're going to put this piece down. And you can see here what we, uh, we decided to do was go with kind of a weathered, grungy sort of feel for our tackle box. Um, kind of like an old school one, not like the new plastic ones, but like the old metal ones that were really popular, just to kind of give it a vintage feel. And it's very possible that your recipient, I guess it depends on the age, uh, had one at, at one point. Okay, so I put some glue on the back of this. We're gonna line it up with the shadow layer here. Okay, so we've got kind of a, I guess it's like a, a just a regular metal, and then we've got kind of a, an oxidized metal on top of it. <clears throat> okay, next we're gonna put this little piece in here. It's gonna pop in there just like a little puzzle piece. Okay, and actually let's do this first. Let's, let's glue this on top of this first, like this. Okay, so we'll flip this over and apply glue to this. We'll try to get a little bit of glue on some of these little areas where we have our caption. Uh, actually, there's not a lot of it's not a very fine font that we selected here, but they're like here under the E for real, R-E-E-L. There's a few little delicate sections there that we should probably try to get some glue on so they don't accidentally get ripped or torn. Okay, and do your best to line that up as accurately as you can. So we kind of have a, a play on words here. You are real cool. Okay, so once we get these two layers um, glued together, we're gonna flip this over and apply our glue to the back of this. And you can see we've strategically cut out the centers of the letters that have little centers so that we don't have to sit there and piece a bunch of letters together. And that's just gonna go right in here like so. It's gonna go down flat. Just make sure you line that up as accurately as you can. Okay. All right, so that part's gonna go flat, and then we have a little fish that we're gonna put together here. And we're gonna begin by, this is the, the main part of our fish. This part's gonna go on top like this, and as you can see, I did spend some time hitting this with a little bit of ink just to de-stress it and make it fit in better with the distressed and, and oxidized look of the pattern papers that we used so that it doesn't stick out too much. Okay, so just line that up as accurately as you can and press that down into place. Perfect. Okay, next we have these two layers. Okay, I'm gonna take this layer and glue it right on top of this layer. So I'm wanting to do a tackle box or, or something for fishing for quite some time um, and finally got a chance to do it. I think it's safe to say that fishing is a very popular hobby, especially among men in the United States. I guarantee you know somebody in your family or a friend that enjoys it. I sure do. It's a dream of mine to have a lake house up in northern Wisconsin where I can do as much fishing as I want Okay, so that's gonna go right on top of there as soon as you get those two layers in place. That looks beautiful. I love these papers. Okay, so let's glue that down now onto the main part of our fish. Okay, so we're just doing some paper piecing here. Nothing crazy, just getting our, getting our gills and our fins wet. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay, and we do have this little circle. It's gonna go right here 
for the eyeball. Just a little drop of glue will do. And pop that in there. Should fit perfectly like a little puzzle. Now, even to this day, it seems like seems like these machines still can't really cut circles as accurately as you would think they'd be able to, but it's still pretty close. It looks pretty good. Okay, and then we have this little black piece. Now, in your, uh, in your files, when you download, or actually when you cut these out, you're gonna have a series of little circles. Uh, the only difference here with the one in the fish is that the circle in the middle is off center. You got some other little donut shapes in here. I have them in here so I don't lose them. Uh, but the, the little cutout in the center is perfectly centered. Okay. And then finally, we have a little additional fin that I'm going to apply with some foam squares to give it some additional dimension. And I think I could fit two on here just to make it nice and sturdy. Peel that backing off. I don't know where it went. There it goes. Okay. And it's going to go on like this. You can see that there's a little shadow element here. So it's gonna go right on top of that little area and look at that beautiful bass. I think it's a bass. All right, and now we're gonna take and actually pop dot this on top of here like so. That looks awesome. Okay, so let's flip this over and apply some foam squares to our fishy. Okay. And I'm just gonna go be very generous with these here. I want to make sure that we got them hooked nicely. We'll peel that off. And also, um, I'm probably going to do this off camera because I don't think I need to walk you through it. But in your cutouts, you have three little hooks. And those hooks are actually going to dangle off of these little circular cutouts here at the bottom. Okay. And uh, I'm actually going to use fishing line to do that. If you don't have fishing line, you can just use some string that coordinates with the rest of your project. That would be fine. Okay, because ultimately this is going to get glued to the inside of the tackle box. And we've got a special place for it. We'll, we'll be going over that in a little bit here. Let me make sure I've got that nice and centered. I do. So again, we've got three silver hooks. Okay. And as I mentioned, um, we've got two going pointing to the left. I'd uh, put the one pointing to the right in the center and just tether those onto these little guys here. Maybe leave, I'd say, oh, I don't know, let's see here. I don't know, just like a, a quarter of an inch maybe, a half an inch, however, however low you want it to dangle, and just tie those on there. But that's that. I'll put this off to the side. We're going to come back to this a little bit later. And in the meantime, we have some little latches and some hinges that we need to pre-assemble. Okay, let's get these all separated out. And I, I'm using this silver foil, and I was able to kind of distress it a little bit. I may mess with it a little bit more. Um, these two, we don't need to do anything to. Neither do, we don't have to do anything to these here either. So those can actually go off to the side for now. And this guy here, we don't need to do anything to either. Uh, but these we do need to assemble, okay? And the way this is gonna work is we've got silver in the back. We're gonna put a black on top and then this piece on top of that so that we have these little black um, little holes here, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get those glued in place. And then we have a little dad emblem that we need, or a little plaque, whatever you want to call it, that we need to assemble. And then we can get into the assembly. Well, actually, we have a handle as well. We're going to assemble that too, just to get it all out of the way. Okay, so get that glued into place. Line it up as accurately as you can. And, and I'm sure some of you actually fish too. Uh, Notice that maybe fishing is not as popular with women, but <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to hook a lovely lady who likes fishing maybe even more than I do. And we were up in <clears throat> we were up in Eagle River last year. 
Okay, so it's gonna look like that. And I might distress that a little bit more, okay, before I put it on. And then this one's gonna go in the same way, same order. Let's put the black on top of the solid silver, and then we're gonna put the silver with the cutout on top of that, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, we were up in Eagle River last summer and we were on the boat since morning. Everyone was getting tired. Of course, Liesl could, she could fish all day nonstop and I get it. Um, but there, the kids were getting crabby and I was like, let's just go, let's go back, let's get some lunch, blah, blah, blah. And she was mad as all heck. And so I felt obligated to, well, I brought up maps, I brought up um, fishing reports, and I pinpointed a location that I thought was going to land us some big fish. <clears throat> and that is exactly when she landed her first muskie, and she was beyond herself. So anyway, we found ourselves a uh, it wasn't the biggest muskie, but it was still a muskie. And so I think they call it the fish of a thousand casts or 10,000 casts or something like that. Okay, so we're gonna put this together now. Uh, this piece here is gonna go on top of the black. So let's get that going. And it's, I guess it's kind of pathetic of me to take credit, take partial credit anyway for helping land that fish. But I mean, I guess it could have, it was probably luck. But I like to just tell myself that all that research I did, uh, lo looking at topography of the lake and pinpointing it with Google Maps and taking us there. I want to say that maybe part of that fish was mine, but um, I don't think she watches my videos, so I don't have to worry about her finding out. But I think she knows that I, I actually laid partial claim to that fish. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're gonna put this piece right on top like so. And that's just gonna say dad. Okay, line that up as accurately as you can. And then that is gonna go right on top of this right here with just a slight little border. Okay, so let's flip her over, apply our glue, and pop that right into place. Try to get that aligned as centered as possible. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. And the, the foil, of course, is it's a little uh, slippery. It's not as porous as cardstock, so sometimes when you pop it on there, if you move it and you think it's dry, it probably isn't, so just be careful, if you're using foil, that is. All right, so that's done. We got these two hinges done, and let's put our little handle together real quick. Okay, so we have these elements here that we need to glue on. These are gonna go on nice and centered as well. So we have a, a little bit of that silver showing on all the sides, a, a silver border, a silver lining. Okay, get that glue on there and pop it in place. Uh, in my little bag of small items, there is the little center for the diamond there that we do need to glue into place. So we'll do that here in just a second. See, I just told you that sometimes on this foil, things tend to slip around a little bit. So just be patient and make sure that everything dries completely. And let me see if I can find these little pieces. So when you're, when you're taking the stuff off your mat, don't forget about these little guys. Uh, if you happen to lose them, I suppose you can just put uh, a little embellishment on there. Uh, rhinestone maybe, or, you know, we found, um, there's, the, there they are, found, and where the heck, hold on a second here. Oh, let me put those in. We found these little Tim Holtz embellishments that are really cool actually. They look like little screws, and I'm gonna see if maybe we can figure out where to put these on the project. It might look, might look kind of cool. So, you know, if you're looking for something masculine, to use as far as embellishments. That would be a, a cool thing to look at. Actually, let me see what the name of these are. Uh, hardware heads, hardware heads, hardware heads, hardware heads, hardware, yep, they're all, oh, and this one is called machinery heads, okay? So anyway, you get the idea. All right, 
So I did spend some time, now with this oxidized grungy paper, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to determine like what colors to use when inking. Um, I, what I did was I just kind of pulled off of the colors that were there. Uh, the most prominent color I think on here is this rust color. So a brown would work. Uh, in some instances, I took the brown and then maybe just kind of added a little bit of a darker blue as well. And the idea is just to kind of blend it. You don't want it to be obvious, but you want to soften those edges a little bit so that, especially because it's a white core paper, you want to kind of hide that white core. Okay. All right. So I have our little diamonds here, and I think this is a good time to grab my pick-me-up tool. A very small little piece that just needs a tiny, tiny dot of glue. I'm going to hit that with my finger too. Okay, and we'll pop that into place right here in the center of our little diamond. I wish this had a point on it. That's not going to work. This thing usually comes with another piece. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, and just don't lose it. Don't lose your little, your little cut out there. And a little dot of glue will do, just like that. And I've got some hair on here or something. Okay. Oops, I don't need that. I need this guy. And I'm just going to come in at an angle like this. I'm doing surgery here. That's what I like to call it. There we go. Perfect. And just press that down. Oops. All right, come on. Really just got to nudge it. Barely. There we go. All right, now stay. There you go. Okay. Awesome. All right, so now it should be pretty dry. You'll notice that you have a, a series of tabs at the bottom of these. Okay, we're going to fold those out just to make sure that we don't accidentally get some glue on those. We're going to put glue on one side and we're going to glue these back to back. I'm just going to sandwich them together. And you do not need to put glue on the little tab portions. We're going to use that to attach this to the top of our tackle box. Okay, but make sure that you get that lined up as accurately as you can. You can kind of use your fingers to feel and make sure it's all lined up correctly. You can take these tabs also and just um, put them down flat now so that you can press down here. And if these tabs are lined up accurately and sitting right on top of each other, you know that your alignment is pretty spot on as well. So that's a good little reference or indicator. Okay, perfect. All right, so the handle's done. I'll we'll put that off to the side. And actually, you know what? We're going to bring these pieces back here for a second. There should be four of them. And that is where we need to glue down our little black donuts. And there should be a total of eight of them. And there they are. Okay, so these are all identical. So it doesn't matter which one you grab. Um, I would definitely use a little pick-me-up tool here to help you get these in place. Just squeeze a little bit of glue out of the bottle and then just dab it. You don't need to keep squeezing more out. And I would hit that with your finger too to thin it out so you don't get glue going all over the place. And you'll notice on these, we have little markers to help you with the positioning of each of these little donuts. Okay. So let's just go through, get all these in place. And then we can start moving on to building the actual tackle box. So yeah, we're going back to uh, going back to Eagle River in June. It'll be Peyton's first trip. Unfortunately, he's probably just going to be sitting there being like, "Why are we constantly rocking?" And <clears throat> hopefully, he handles the motion of the pontoon well. I'm sure he will. And hopefully, it's warm enough so he can. Can take him swimming and stuff, but I can't wait to can't wait to fish with them. Okay, and let's get these guys in place. There we go. Well, it's always I really love going up there. I need like a month up there just to kind of decompress and de-stress a little bit. <clears throat> One of these days. But I love my uh, I love my customers from Wisconsin. Actually, uh, <clears throat> they are some of the nicest people up there. And actually, technically, 
Uh, the place that I go to is frequented by a lot of Chicagoans. So just because it's Wisconsin, uh, it's, it seems to be like the getaway for everyone in Illinois, especially Northern Illinois, uh, and especially people that enjoy the outdoors. You know, not so much the city folk, but uh, either way, you know, it's not for everyone, but boy, it's, it's awesome up there. <clears throat> when we're driving up north. Once I get past uh, a certain, uh, certain latitude, you just kind of feel, it just feels different. It's so quiet at night. You could literally, uh, you can have all the windows open. And, you know, occasionally you'll hear just a loon in the distance or a boat coming by. But, boy, when, uh, when no one's out on the water, you can have all your windows open. And you'd swear they were all closed and you were in, like, some soundproof room. Because it is, the silence is deafening, as they say, which is pretty cool. I know there's some people that, you know, especially people that live in, like, Manhattan, they get so accustomed to... All that white noise, the traffic, you know, the city that never sleeps. Uh, boy, I, I don't think I could ever get used to that. I mean, I guess I could. Or I'm a human. I can, I can adapt, but I'm not sure that I'd want to. Okay, so we have all this stuff done. I can just put that off to the side for a moment. And let's begin by putting together the bottom of the tackle box here, okay? And let's just go over some of the pieces real quick here. This piece here... It has a score line uh, on the top half here. This is gonna be the hinge that allows us to open and close this. I can put that off to the side. We're gonna use that last, okay? But in the meantime here, it's a pretty straightforward assembly. Uh, we have these four pieces and they are numbered. You have a Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, and this one has a Roman, it's not a Roman numeral four, it's four dashes in the shape of a square. Okay, so we need to glue these together in order. So we've got one, and then two, it's gonna go right next to it, and then three, and then four, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna begin by applying glue to tab number two. And we wanna make sure that we get enough glue on here. And I'm gonna put a little extra out towards the end and pull that out all the way to the very edge. And also, keep in mind here that we have two different size tabs and to make sure that you keep those together. So the larger tab is up at the top, shorter tab at the bottom, okay? And I am a little bit out of my element here. This, this is just a large piece. So you just wanna be careful in applying that. Get that in place, line it up as accurately as you can. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over onto itself and then press down right there. And you can see how these tabs, you've got the tab for this long section and the tab for this section, they should line up here perfectly. So press that down and hold it in place. Okay. Make sure that everything is nice and solid and it is, that looks good. Okay, so there's tab one. Tab two is now glued down. Now we're gonna take tab or piece with the number three on there. We're gonna apply our glue to tab number three. That's a long piece. I'm not used to, this is a pretty large project actually, but I mean, tackle boxes are pretty big. Try to make it as big as we could. That's one thing I like about, uh, especially for this, you can fit a lot of cool, fishing related gifts inside of this box once it's all said and done. Okay, so we're just gonna take and line this up as accurately as you can. Again, make sure that the tabs are on the right side. Technically, I don't think you could even glue it wrong. Okay, so I've got that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over onto itself. Check the alignments. Make sure it's nice and aligned here. And it is, press that down and continue to press down until that glue mostly is set. Make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. And just keep holding that down. There we go. Okay. So we have over here tab one on this end. 
no tab here. We're going to take piece number four. And again, it's four dashes in the shape of a square. Like that. Let's get that glue out to the very edge. Keep the big tabs on top. Like this. And tuck that right in. Make sure it's nice and lined up. Okay, and fold it over onto itself. Make sure it's nice and straight and press down. There we go. Okay, so now all four of these sections are together now. You can see we've got small, large, small, large, like so. And now we're gonna take it and close it up like this. So we're gonna apply glue to tab number one. Now this is a nice long piece. Tab number one is getting glue applied to it. And just like we did the last few times, let's spread that glue out, make sure everything's nice and crisp and clean. And technically, because this is symmetrical, you should be able to pop, put this down, make sure this is nice and flush here, and then just take this other piece and it should magically fall into place. Make sure it's nice and straight. Press that into place, like so. And then you can take it and fold it over onto that seam. And there we go. Okay. There we have it. Just keep pressing that down. And we have the beginnings of our bottom. Now, before, uh, before we wrap this up here, I typically like to put my panels on um, while everything's flat. Now there's one panel, the back panel, that we cannot put on until we get our hinge in place. Now let me show you the difference here. These, out of these two long pieces here, okay, there is, let me see. Yeah, so you'll notice that there's a slight little cutout here. Uh, it's actually kind of raised a little bit. And there's one here and one here on one of the pieces. And on the other long piece, there's only one in the center. Okay, the one in the center is going to be on the front. The one with the two raised sections, this is for the back. So again, that's going to go back here onto this little hinge. So we're going to put that off to the side for now. Okay, and also keep in mind that, remember I mentioned that we have tabs that are different sizes here. This one's a little thinner and this one's thicker. Okay. The thicker section is going to be your bottom, so that's going to go there, and the thinner section is going to have this little lip, just to kind of finish it off and make it more sturdy. With that said, since this box is symmetrical, and there's nothing really that differentiates this long side from this long side, there's no marker or anything like that, so you can at this point choose which side is going to be your front, okay? And I'm just going to decide that this is my front, okay, and this is my top with the thinner tab. So this guy here is going to go right on here like so with a very, very, very slight border going all the way around. And again, keep in mind that you need the little section with the little uh, raised part right here in the middle. That needs to be pointing up. And again, this tab here that's up, this is the bottom. So this needs to go here, and that you want to be flush with the score mark, and everything else is gonna be slightly below it with a very, very tiny border, okay? So I think, uh, I think that's a good time to do this, yeah. And again, try to keep it nice and centered. And I'm just, before I glue it down, I'm just taking a look making sure that everything looks good, and it does, so we can go ahead and begin applying our glue. So remember, you gotta keep that other piece, the back of it for later, once we get the, we're gonna use that later on. That's gonna actually go in place almost when the project is all but complete. Okay, so, Taking a look here on the side, making sure it's nice and centered. Perfect. There we go. Press that down. 
So this little cutout, this little raised area is pretty much flush with the top of this. If I was to fold the tab down, it's pretty much flush. Okay, so get that all in place. And I just wanted to thicken this up nicely. And you can see the, the pattern that we have here is pretty cool. Nice and rusty, old school grunge. Okay, so now we can take these two for the sides and get those in place. It's up to you uh, if you're using a pattern like this, which side you want to be up, which side you want to be down. Don't really matter. Okay. And again, very, very slight border. I think it's like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. So just make sure you get that in there nice and centered. Okay, press that down. Beautiful. And I'll just flip this this way, like so. And that's where this guy's gonna go. Same thing. And I've opted to kind of focus the, the red part or the rusty part more uh, towards the front. So it kind of looks more continuous. Okay, again, just kind of eyeball that little border, drop that into place. It should be nice and centered. That looks great. And press that down into place. Perfect. Okay, so we got the panels on the three sides, which is good. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna grab these large pieces here. We're gonna form the bottom. And you'll notice here on these two, these are almost identical, with the exception of one of them has a little L, the letter L for liner etched into it with uh, score marks. That's gonna go inside the box but we need to focus on this piece. So the one with the L, put that off to the side, and this is gonna be my front. So I'm going to anchor this to the front piece. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna glue this down right here onto this tab. We're gonna do one tab initially. We'll do all of the three other tabs in one fell swoop. Okay, so in a long piece like this, you want to get enough glue on there, but you don't want to overdo it because it can kind of warp it. And you want to move relatively quick. Okay, there we go. And grab this piece, get it nice and centered on that tab all the way out to the edge. Okay, you can nudge that a little bit and just begin pressing it down. Fold that down, and then you can press down on the inside to help the rest of that tab make contact. Okay, here we go. And let's take a look at our work here. That looks pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, and I can tell that, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of glue. And sometimes with a lot of glue, and actually, so if you ever run into that, or you got a ton of glue on something. The glue's gonna make it wet, but you can take a little brayer and just really spread that glue around and thin it out. It sometimes helps eliminate the appearance of warping. Yeah, that worked. That worked nicely. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and fold it out of the way. And we're gonna apply glue to the remaining three tabs. I'm gonna make a prediction here that I'm gonna go, need to go in and kind of touch up some of the areas because uh, we got a lot of surface area to cover here and this rarely ever works the first time because by the time I'm done with this and by the time I spread the glue out, um, some of it has dried. I'm gonna do one little line towards the very edge, just a little extra glue there so that I can take and spread that out to the very edge. Try to kind of hold it in place like so. And again, if you don't get it the first time, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use to clean it up. 
and make everything look nice and flush. So focus on getting it aligned with the opposite side at this point. You may need to kind of push and nudge things around a little bit. Like right here, I need to kind of push that a little bit. There we go. Try to get that aligned out to the edge on all three sides now. And as you go, you kind of wipe off any of that excess glue that might be squirting out. Just go as carefully and quickly as you can. Let's flip this over and press down on the rest of the surface of the tab. Okay, we're doing our best here. And we're probably gonna end up with a few little gaps. And that always happens on a large piece like this, and that's okay. I'm gonna show you what you can do to clean that up. Okay, but continue that the glue, more than likely, in a lot of spots, is still pretty wet. So you got a good chance to go in, press down. And you know, another thing too, speaking of the brayer, uh, that thing doesn't make it all the way out, but you can kind of push down on the tab a little bit to flatten that glue out a bit. Okay. All right. So yeah, I have some little gaps, which I knew was going to happen. Grab my box of scrap pieces and just grab some scrap paper. I always, after, uh, after cutting projects out, when I have scrap pieces, I just cut them into little rectangles or squares, put a little bit of glue right on the edge of that and tuck it in between any areas where you might have a little gap. Okay, and then you can just press down and give that little area a little extra TLC. Let's see, uh, that one, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do much to that. That actually looks pretty good. That was the first side I did, that's why. Because I only had to do one tab at a time there. I got a little gap there. Just needs a tiny little bit of glue and it'll kind of keep it in place and get rid of those gaps, okay? And you can also even kind of put a little bit of glue right on the very edge of this piece so that you can literally just pop it right into that tiny little gap. It's almost as if uh, it's not quite enough to slide it in there, but it's just enough to kind of put the tip of this in there and get some additional glue in there. Okay, so I'm gonna chuck this one, get a fresh one, and I'm just gonna throw a little bit of glue right on the very edge of this. And just find my little gaps here. And just pop a little bit of glue in there. Rub that off, press down. And it works wonderfully. There we go. That one was, I was able to actually get it in there. Okay, cool beans. All right, so now the inside here, we have this little piece, the one with the L. Go ahead and throw a little bit of glue around the perimeter. Make sure you don't get any on the actual walls. Just throw that in like so. Pop that in there. And it should, there we go. It should just drop in nicely. Just go around the perimeter with your finger. It's gonna hide those tabs and also reinforce the bottom, make it nice and strong. Okay. There we go. Cool. All right, so it's coming together here. All right, now we're gonna get this little lip in place and it's just gonna go on like so. And just like we did with the bottom, we're gonna start off by anchoring it to one of the sides. And I'm gonna start with the front because obviously I want that to look the best. So very easy here with the glue, but again, we need to get glue on the entire width of this. And I am gonna spread that glue out to the very edge. Let me move this out of the way because I need to get my finger out into this corner here. There we go. Glue's nice and tacky. Grab this piece, center it nicely right out to the edge. Make sure it is centered. Let me push this in a little bit because this paper is not as rigid as you would think. So it kind of was dipping in a little bit towards the center and that's okay. It's natural. This is what we deal with. Okay, I'm gonna put this down now and just press down. 
from the inside really help that make good solid contact grab that brayer if you have one really help flatten that glue out there we go okay so there is the lip that's going to be on the front and now I don't know what happened there open this up move this out of the way like so and we're going to apply glue to the remaining three tabs just like we did on the bottom and put the rest of this down in place again we've got a lot of area to cover here so you got to work relatively quick and I'm going to take and spread that glue nice and thin all the way out to the edge like so just go quick there we go and Again, focus on getting this side aligned first. You can fold that down, get it nice and centered. And then the other sides should just kind of fall into place. I'm gonna go to the very corners first and then work my way down the middle. Okay, so we're just gonna go around and just kind of like you're making a pie crust, just squeeze all the way around, make sure that this Little lip is making contact with the tabs throughout, all the way around. And there we go. Okay, so the bottom of our tackle box is looking pretty good. Okay, and remember this back part, I'm gonna put that on later on, because this piece is gonna go on right here, because this is our hinge, and the other half of it, the top of it, is gonna go on, and this will go on afterwards. Okay, so we'll worry about that later. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> we're kind of uh, getting close to the end here, and we have the lid. Now this piece looks kind of weird, but I'll explain how that works in just a minute. And you'll notice we have this piece here with a little L that is a liner. It's going to go inside. This piece is also going to go inside. Okay, so we do have two pieces that look like this and they both have L's on them. Those are liners, those are gonna go on the inside. That also is what I guess we can call a liner that's going on the inside. This piece, however, is actually gonna be, it's actually gonna go on here to cover that up. Since this is blue, since the top of uh, the tackle box is this, this pool or uh, turquoise color, we wanna keep that consistent, especially when we put this panel on there. Okay, so that's gonna go there. We can put that off to the side. Uh, but what I do want to do is, while this is flat, we can go ahead and put a few of these panels on. I'm not going to do all of them. Actually, I think we might be able to do all of them. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's grab, let's grab these pieces here, and you can see that the pieces on the end are the thinnest, and also. One of these, well actually, just like, just like the bottom of the box, you'll notice that these two thin pieces, one has two little areas that are kind of raised, okay? So again, that is gonna be the back, and then one has one little area that is raised, and that's gonna be the front. So that's how we're gonna differentiate between the front and the back. And these are gonna go on like so. And just like before, the slightest, slightest border, okay? Uh, these pieces are going to go on the sides, put those off to the side for a second. And then we have these pieces. These are a little bit thicker. Those are going to go there. This one's going to go here. And then, of course, this one with the two slits is going to go in the center. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and begin putting these in place. Get this out of the way so that we're not trying to like, bite off more than we can chew here. And I'm folding it this way just so I can kind of uh, well cancel out some of the noise and not be distracted by the rest of this. Okay, so yeah, there's going to be a very, very slight border. And again, this is going to be our front here. Okay, so this is the piece with the one little section that's sticking out. Let's get that glued in place. And that little notch that sticks out, you want that. And you can see there's a little F cut into this for front. You want that to be, this little notch here, 
You want that to be out towards the end. You don't want it this way with the notch going up. We want it down like this. And this notch, you want that notch to be flush with the score mark there. Okay, and also make sure it's centered so that you have just a very, very slight border. And I'm gonna actually take this and fold this back so I can just make sure that it's nice and even there. And that looks perfect. So let's press that down into place. Okay, just like that. Next, let's grab the next largest piece or next thickest piece. And it's gonna go right here. And again, nice and centered, barely, barely, barely a border there around, okay. And I'm just doing little curly cues all the way down, trying to make sure I get a little bit of glue out to the very perimeter, like so. And again, this pattern that I have is not really, uh, doesn't matter which way I do it, could go either way. But if you have a specific pattern that has elements that need to be right side up, just make sure that you put them in correctly. So again, this is gonna be the top. And if you have a pattern, make sure it's right side up as you put it down. Okay, that looks pretty good as far as the centering goes. Okay, so next, what we can do, so you can get this piece in place, and you might wanna lift this up a little bit just to make sure that you're not obstructing the little slits there, okay? You want these slits on this pattern. You can see, I don't know if you can see it. Yep, there it is, there's a little slits there. So make sure they line up with the slits on the actual structure. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to get our handle in there. So be very cautious and just pay attention. Make sure that you get it right. Okay, I'm going around the perimeter first and then just do a little zigzag in the center just for good measure. And I'm gonna lift this up so I can get a little, little light in through there to help me with the placement. Make sure that I'm getting it lined up with those notches, perfect. Okay, give it a little bit of an, a nudge up. There we go. Okay, press that down. And now while we're, while we're working on this here, uh, these little pieces here are actually gonna go right here. Okay, so I need to decide if I wanna kind of distress this a little bit more. And I think I'm going to just kind of dirty it up a little bit more so it blends better with the rest of the project. And for something like this, I don't mind coming in a little bit further and really just kind of just get it nice and distressed. Okay, and it's going to go like this. And you want to match that up with the notch or the little slit again. Okay. Eventually, once we actually have this thing together, we're going to put the handle through this. Okay, so line that up with the slit. There are also some markers on here to help you with the positioning of these. They're kind of tough to see because of my pattern. Uh, if you're not using a pattern like I am, maybe those slits will be a little bit more visible for you. Okay, and I'm just gonna go kind of heavy and just muddy it up and dirty it up a little bit. That's fine. Just kind of adding to the weathered, uh, what's the word? oxidized look of this whole project. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up so I can actually see the light shining through there to help me with the positioning. There we go, pardon my head there. That works, okay. Uh, it might have moved a little bit, that's fine. Okay, cool. All right, moving right along here to the next section. We want the, uh, not the thinnest piece, but the one that's just a little bit thicker than those end pieces. And go around the perimeter, do a little curly cues, little pigtails. And this is a little zigzag down the center. Okay, again, getting it nice and centered on there. Barely, barely, barely have a border there. There we go, perfect. Press that down. Let me move this out of the way before I get it all over the place. And then finally, this piece, again, remember these two little raised areas, you want those pointing out towards the edge. That's gonna be the back and that's where we're gonna put those little hinges. So, all right, so now what we need to do is we're actually gonna take these pieces here and we're gonna glue them 
like this. Okay, so I think it's best to start at the top, like so. Okay, and we can actually take these two pieces. And let's just put our panels on now while everything is flat. And this is gonna go on like this. And again, very, very, very slight border there, almost non-existent. So let's get that going. Okay. And you know, the lack of the border is just to kind of make this thing look like it's fully made out of metal. We'll make sure to include the links to the papers. I think we actually found these, uh, I think we found these on Amazon. It's really, I don't think it's a brand that I even recognize as far as the, the paper company goes, but it's pretty good. It's nice and thick paper. So this is gonna make it nice and sturdy. Okay. And these oxidized pieces here that I'm putting down right now, um, I actually took, again, this rust color. I found an ink pad that is very similar in color. Where the heck did it go? Um, yeah, actually here it is. It's called Red Brick. That was a good color and it worked nicely. Okay, so back to this now. I'm gonna take and grab one of these. It doesn't matter which one, they're both the same. And we're gonna apply glue to just one of these tabs here. Do it however is most comfortable. I'm gonna do it like this. Nice and easy with the glue. Spread that out to the very edge, like so. And then you can actually put this down flat. I think it's probably safe to do that. Get that nice and centered on that tab. Nice and lined up. Don't worry about those neighboring tabs just yet. We're not too concerned about those just yet. And then you can fold it over on itself and just check and make sure it's nice and aligned and flush. There we go. Press that down like so. Okay, and now you can pick a side, doesn't matter which side. I'm gonna grab this tab here and apply my glue to this tab. And we'll start forming the shape for the lid. Whoops, I'm getting glue all over the place here. There we go, okay. And just tuck that behind, line it up as accurately as you can, and press that into place and hold. Get it nice and lined up, then you can put it down on your surface like this and push down on that tab. Really push that glue into the fibers of the paper, and that looks beautiful. Okay, so finally here on this side, we have one more tab, and I just noticed that this panel here is lifting up a little bit. Uh, good opportunity to use that little painting method to kind of get it nice and flush if necessary. If, that's, if that happened to you, you can do that. And I may just do that real quick here, okay? So there we go, we're lining that final side up like so. Give it a quick press. Okay, so moving along over here to this side. Now, I realized here that I made a mistake. Um, I put the back piece on. This is the back piece with the two little sections here. I was not supposed to do that. Okay, so ignore that. I'll make sure to put a note in there. I'll fix it though. It's not, it's not the end of the world for me. Okay, but let's finish this off. The back, the back panel, the back pattern piece uh, should not go on just yet because we need to put the hinge on first. That's why we left it off the bottom. Remember, we did that. I should have done that for the lid as well. And that's okay, I'm gonna fix it because you can fix things, it's fine. But I will make sure to make a note so you guys don't make the same mistake. Okay, so that piece is in place. And now finally on this side, we've got one more section to glue into place. That's this tab. Spread that out to the very edge. Tuck that in. Okay. And again, you can put that down on your surface once you have it lined up and press down. And there we go. Okay, so again, now, this is my front here. It's got the one section, and that's all good. It's just this piece that I should not have put on because, as I mentioned, we gotta put the hinge on it first, 
and then we put the panel on over it, and that's okay. I'll, I'll show you here in a second. All right, so now let's go to the other side, and we're gonna do the same thing with this piece. It's gonna go on like this, just like we did, exactly the same thing that we did on the other side. So start with the center tab, get your glue on there, and spread it out. I will not let you make that mistake, don't worry. Well, you should have. Okay, so get that lined up, nice and centered, right up to that score mark, and press that down, and hold. Put that down flat, press down, Okay, so we've got this piece in place, and just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna slowly and methodically just get the rest of this in place. I'm gonna put some glue on this next tab here. It doesn't matter which side you go to. I just decided to go here. You could go on that side, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. And line that up and press, make sure it's nice and aligned. Give those tabs a good press. There we go. And now here, because this thing's already anchored on this side, it's gonna be a little tough to get in there. So rather than try to force your glue nozzle in there, um, one option, you can try it if you want. I don't recommend it. I'm just gonna put some glue on a scrap piece of paper. I'm gonna paint that glue onto the tab like this. Bring that tab down and just literally just paint some glue on there. Like that, okay? And line that up. Now when you paint, you're not thinning it out with your fingers. So occasionally, if you get a little too much glue on there, you have to just kind of wipe some of that off with your finger. Make sure you clean your fingers off. There we go, okay? And I can see here on this guy, you got a little area there on that panel that isn't sitting flush. So I'm just gonna take another little scrap and just tuck a little bit of glue behind that panel and press it into place so everything looks nice and polished, okay? All right, so that just leaves two more tabs here. And again, uh, it's a little, yeah, you, can, you can probably still get in there with a, with a glue bottle. It is getting a little tougher and you're more prone to kind of make mistakes with the glue when you're in tight spots like that. So if painting with a scrap piece of paper makes more sense, and I'm gonna have to do it anyway, so I probably just should have started with it. Go ahead and do that, and that's fine. Okay, let's tuck that up against the inside of our side piece here. Line that up as accurately as you can, press down. Perfect. A little, couple little drops of glue squeezed out, and that's okay. I'm gonna grab one more scrap, throw some glue on there, and again, just paint that glue on that tab. Just like that. Perfect. And tuck that behind. Get it nice and aligned. And you can put that down on your surface and press down. Perfect. All right, so now, just like we did, oh, well, actually, we have these pieces here. These are little liner pieces that are gonna go inside here. So what I would do is move these tabs out of the way. Okay. And these are gonna go right in here. So you can actually pop that on your surface and this is gonna go right in here to cover up those tabs. And it's also gonna make it nice and sturdy. So let's flip this over apply our glue to the inside. Like so. And just pop that in there as far as it'll go up against the inside. It should not be obstructing this little tab down here. Okay, so this tab here should be, should be free flowing. Okay, we'll flip it over and do the same thing with this panel for the inside, the liner, I should say. Okay. 
Okay, and it's gonna go all the way in, as far back as you can put it. Just push it so it, until it can't go any further. Make sure it's nice and centered. And voila. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put the lip on. Okay. And I'm gonna go on the front. Start on the front, just the side with the one little raised area. We're gonna glue that down first, since that's gonna be front and center, literally. Let's get your glue on this one tab. Let's thin it out, spread it out to the very edge. Okay, and grab this piece, let's anchor it. Right here to the center. Make sure it's centered and right out to the very edge. Looks good there, looks good there. I think, yep, looks great. And just like you're making a pie crust. Just press that all the way out. I would put it in with the noodles after you drain them. Okay, so the one side is all set. Okay. Make sure you don't have any gaps. If you do, we may need to use our little paint method to clean it up. Got this little area here. That little area there did not want to stay. So I'll just throw a little bit of glue right in there. Just kind of wedge it in there and press down. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. All right, so now flip this up. Just move it out of the way temporarily. And we're gonna put glue on the remaining three sections, three tabs. Try to go, try to keep it like a medium consistency on the glue here. Because we don't want to wet the paper, but we also don't want it to dry. So it's, uh, there's a fine line there. Just have to be careful. Okay. And this part, this is the side that I initially put the glue on and I can already tell based on how it feels that it's already dried up to the point where I'm gonna to have to probably go in and fix it. All right, flip it down, focus on getting the lip down on this side first, the side closest to you. Make sure it's nice and centered. That glue's still wet over there, that's good. Bring it all the way out to the edge. There we go. Yeah, a little excess glue there, that's okay. And then work the perimeters. Lot of surface area to cover. Again, probably gonna have to go in and do a little bit of cleanup, but that's okay. That's okay. As long as it's some of that glue, at least holds it in place for us, you can always go in and clean it up. But you know what, maybe, just maybe, I might have gotten it all in one fell swoop. How amazing would that be? I don't think so, but we'll see. This side's pretty good. Okay. Let's have a look here. Yep, just go ahead and give it a once over. Take a look on all the sides. Make sure everything is nice and flush. If it's not, if you got any little gaps or areas where it's not sitting completely flat with this, I'd probably just put some glue right on the very tip of this and just find any little areas that need a little extra love. Just tuck that in there and press that down. Wipe off any excess glue. That looks good. Let's see how that sits. Yep, okay. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so now we've got the two panels inside. And what I'm gonna do next is, well, actually, it's time to put the handle in place. And before we do that, 
there should be, uh, there's a series of little markers here. Okay, and we want, we want dad facing the front. Okay, and this, where's the front? The front is the side with the one notch, which is right here. So we want dad facing this way. Look for the little markers. There's little markers that coincide with the little, uh, little corners here. They're curved. Okay, we're gonna glue that down flat. So let's get that in place before we put our handle in place. Okay, just look for those little markers. It's just gonna help you with centering. If you don't use them, you can try to eyeball it, and that's fine too. Okay, press that down. Actually put them over, press down from the other side so you don't go damaging the top part of this. And that looks pretty good. Okay, the next, we're going to take our handle, and we've got the two tabs. We're going to slide those through the slits as far as it'll go. And then on the inside, we're going to take and put glue on the back side of these little tabs and push them up against the inside there. So just throw a little bit of glue on both sides. Make sure it's all the way in. Okay, just double check and make sure it's all the way in and then take and spread the tabs apart and push down up against the inside and just hold that in place. Okay, the beautiful sturdy box, super sturdy. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side again, making sure that it's completely in and flush. Go to the other side here. Spread those tabs apart. There we go. Okay, there we go. Give that a few extra seconds to dry. Don't jump the gun on that. Let's see how nice. Oh, and don't be alarmed here. Um, actually, mid assembly changed my bottom pattern. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that one. So I went with this blue instead and distressed it with a little bit of ink. So it's okay. Rarely do we make that kind of decision last minute, but we did, and it's okay. All right, so now uh, what we need to do, this piece here, uh, you wanna fold this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on this surface here and just glue it to itself here. And it's gonna create these little boxes, because what we're gonna do is actually take and glue this to this, because we need it, uh, when you open it up, it's gonna show up in there, okay? So I'll show you what I mean here. But on the bottom, this is the non-textured side here. I'm gonna put some glue on that, fold it over onto itself, and the edge of this, just push it back as far as it'll go against itself, right in the center, and just press that down, like so. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. In, press it down on itself. I'm just creating a platform for this little caption that's going to go on the inside. Okay, that's pretty much it. And I guess if you want, just to keep it together, you can throw a little bit of glue on these two sections and just kind of glue those together as well if you want. You don't have to. But I'm going to do it anyway. Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over and apply glue to this entire liner. It's gonna go inside to cover up those little tabs and also to reinforce the top of the lid. Make it nice and strong. Just like that. Just pop that right into place, nice and centered. There you go. You can put that down flat on your surface and push down all the way throughout. Great box. Careful not to destroy the handle. Okay, cool. All right, don't forget where the front is. That's our front. And we're almost done here. Not quite, but almost. Okay, there we go. Looking sharp. Okay, so now, again, I goofed up here. 
And I have this panel on here. You should not have this panel on. This is what we're going to do. Let me get rid of that. We need to take our hinge piece now. We're going to glue this on the back. So we'll just start off with the bottom. So of course you'll know, separate it here. We've got a score mark. Let's do the bottom first. And just make sure you get that glue out to the very edge, the perimeter. All the way up to the top as well. And I'm probably going to go in and use my little painting method to tighten it up a little bit at the top. Make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. Nice and centered as well. Press that down into place. You put that down on your surface, push down. Okay. There we go. Okay. Nice and seamless all the way around, as it should be. There we go. Okay, looks good. And I guess what I meant was right here, if you have any little gaps in there, then you can take glue in some of these spots here. Just to tighten it up a little bit. That's fine. Okay, so now is a good time to put your back panel in place here. Like that. Okay, and again, it's going to butt up to that score mark and it's going to be a very, very slight border all the way around. Very, very slight. Okay, so let's do that. Again, I changed my changed my pattern paper midway through the. We had two options, and wasn't sure how it would look with the first one, even though I really liked it. I opted to go with this one. This one was a little cleaner looking, so I took some took some orange ink, actually this rust color, that brick color that I uh, referenced earlier in the video. And just ink the edges of it and it turned out to work perfectly. Okay, so that's gonna go on now that we have the hinge. You can flip that over again and push down from the inside so we don't go warping anything. Okay. Press that all the way down and around. Looks good. Okay, now this piece here, again, this is to maintain the same color as the top structure. That's gonna go on first and then you need to put your panel on, the one that I accidentally put on the actual structure, the top structure. So I'll explain that in a second here. Let's just get this piece in place. And that's gonna cover this entire section. Just make sure it's flush at the top and the sides. And then you know you've got it correctly aligned. Put that down on the surface, press that down. So again, you see this color here, and that's going to match up with this color here now. Okay, and I have a little bit of a gap there that I'm not digging, so I'm going to clean that up real quick. Just throw a little bit of glue in there. There we go. Put that down on my surface, press down. Okay, so remember now, this is the front. This is the side with the one raised notch. This is our front here, the side with the one raised notch. This is the panel that you were not supposed to put on because that's going to go here. So you see what I mean? This is, going to, this is what we're going to use to connect this all. And then this panel needs to go on here. Okay, so pretend that we never did this and that actually we're putting it on here. I'm just going to have to cut out another one and pop it on there. I'll probably just do that after I'm done with my video here. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take this and glue this up against this section here, like that. Okay, so it's going to go right on the back of this, is going to go right on here. And again, don't forget, you did not put this panel on. I did because I glued up, but you did not. So let's get our glue on here. Make sure that we get it all the way out to the top edge here. Maybe put a little extra there. Spread that out, out to 
the sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, make sure the front is facing forward. We'll pop this in here. Make sure that it's nice and flush in the front. Okay, and then we're going to take this and just press it up against the back. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it is all in place now, opens up nicely. Now, if you have any little gaps here, again, you can throw a little bit of glue in there, just paint it in, and you can actually just take and kind of squeeze it right here like that, just to make that hinge a little more secure. But it's looking really sharp. And all that's left to do at this point is just kind of wrap it up. So let's grab, Let's grab the hinges on the front, okay? And this little guy is gonna go right here up against that little, that little raised area, that little notch, okay? So if you want to hit this with a little more ink, and I'm gonna go with this rust and see how that looks. Just to dirty it up a little bit more, you can do that. I have some gilding, uh, I don't know what it's called. What is it called? Gilding paste, I think. Gilding wax. I might try to put some of that on there. Uh, but for now, I think this is okay. I'll just hit that with a little extra ink. Okay. So this guy's going to go right here like so. So let's get our glue flowing on the back of this. And again, this one's going to go right here. Just like this. You want that to go right on top of that little raised area, pretty much as far as it'll go. Let me move this out of the way. Just like that. Okay, press that into place. There we go. Perfect. And then this guy is gonna go right here. The flush part of this, the straight part, is gonna go right on that little that little raised area that we've referenced a handful of times. And we only want to put glue on this top section. We don't want to put glue on this section here. That's where we're going to put our little Velcro dot to keep this thing closed. Okay. And we have some of this hardware that's going to go on the back. That's mostly just decorative. This one's actually functional. Oh, and you know what? There's one little piece on this that I forgot to put on. We're going to do that in just a second. Just make sure that we've got it on there correctly. That looks good. Okay, so that's going to go right on there. And our little Velcro dot is going to go right on there. Um, there's one little piece that I forgot to put on. And that's just going to go right here, like so. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw a little bit of glue on the back of this. There we go. And you want a nice even border around this element. Now we're going foil on foil, which can sometimes be a little challenging because it likes to kind of scoot around. Just press that down into place. There we go. Very nice. Okay. And let's not forget our little Velcro dot. Okay. Let's cut one out. Got to line these up better. There we go. You can do two if you want. I'm just going to do one. I think that's plenty. I guess it depends on how much stuff you're planning on putting in here and whether or not you're going to actually hold it by the handle. You technically can, uh, depending on how much weight it's supporting. So we're going to put the Velcro dot right there. I still have the backing on the other half still on. I'm going to pull that off. There it goes. And now I'm going to lift this up gently. Make sure it's centered. And then go ahead and press that Velcro dot in place. 
and there it goes. And that's gonna stay exactly where it needs to. And we've got our little latch all done. So now we can hold it like so. And then finally, put this over on the back. We have these little pieces here. And there's a total of four of them, two and two. Again, if you want to dirty them up a little bit while they're free, feel free to do that now. I'm just gonna do that. Okay, and one's gonna go like this right here. And the other one, you can see that there's rounded corners on the tops, flat on the middle there. Let's get those in place. All these beautiful little details. Okay, there we go. That's in place. Grab the next one. The flat edge is going to go up. The rounded corners are going to be on the bottom. Okay. And you're going to put that right up to that little raised area so that it looks nice and seamless. Just like that. Okay. And then finally the same thing on the other half. Okay, this one I'm gonna put on the bottom, flat edge pointing up. Like that. And then finally this guy here. And don't forget again the little bass guy that's going inside. Don't forget to string your, your hooks on there so that they're dangling. It's a nice little, nice little touch. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, when we open it up, it kind of like gives the appearance of, let me open it up, where the heck is it? There it is. You can see how that looks, that looks cool. Okay. And that's what it looks like from the front. Awesome. And let's open this up so I can show you where the little bass is going to go. Uh, again, don't forget about your hooks. Let me just go through that one more time. I think we have two going to the left, one going to the right. Just use some fishing line or some string to uh, connect these so that they're kind of dangling. And then what we're going to do is glue that right to the inside onto this little platform here. Just make sure that it's nice and centered. So when he opens it up, okay, you gotta bring it up just a tiny little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna show you with the prototype here. You wanna glue this down so that when the lid is open, it's kind of hard to tell, but the hooks kind of dangle there, okay? So you can either pop dot that or you can glue it down. I think I'm just gonna glue it down flat right on here like so. And then just make sure that those hooks are on there as well. And you're pretty much good to go. I, I think this pattern paper really sets this off and makes it what it is. And I actually have the stack here. It's by Ella and Viv Paper Company. It's called the Oxidation Kit. Uh, it's from 2017, so it is a little bit older uh, but that is the stack that we use to create this super cool uh, oxi oxidized retro looking tackle box. So that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit us on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, make sure you hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our Love Dad bundle, I'd love to see it. And so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group or Dreaming Tree Official and join myself and the over 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So anyway, I had a blast. I hope you did too. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and also please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.